hey guys, my name is Ben Oxley. I'm a graduate student here in the Canon Z's group, and today we're going to talk about carbon coating. Um, carbon coating is super important if you're doing reactions with particularly reactive elements like your alkalis or your alkali earth metals, uh, because what they'll do is they'll react with your tube rather than your other reactants. And so in order to prevent that, uh, we do what's called carbon coating, where we uh, deposit a layer of essentially graphite on the inside of our tubes. And so what that does is it acts as a physical barrier to prevent your particularly reactive things from reacting with the glass and keeps everything reacting together. Um, so the way we do that is we take a little bit of acetone or some other really small organic solvent, you burn it off under a torch. And so what that does is it literally burns away the solvent and leaves behind the layer of graphite, uh, giving you a nice carbon coated tube. When you're doing this, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the inside of our tube a little bit with acetone, shake it up so that we get a nice good coverage on the inside of our tube. And then we pour it into our designated acetone bucket you always want to do this off the ceiling bench because acetone is highly flammable and we don't need any extra fires while we're playing with fire. So, um, the actual carbon coat itself is pretty straightforward. I'm going to switch my goggles out here. Um, you don't need a really high flame because the acetone combusts at a pretty reasonable temperature. Um, so let's get our torch lit. So I like like a pretty moderate amount of methane and like a, a pretty quiet, just so you can like just start hearing the torch is probably a good temperature. So now we're gonna start carbon coating. I like to start at the tip, holding the tube sort of upward in my hand. And I'm just gonna stick the tube in the flame until you can see the carbon coat start to sort of bloom. And then I'm gonna slowly rotate the tube around in the flame until we get probably two, two and a half inches of coverage down the tube. So you can carbon coat as, uh, as high up the tube wall as you want, but if you have too much carbon, it's gonna get in the way of your ceiling, so it's gonna prevent you from getting a good seal. So really you only need to carbon coat uh, for as, uh, as high up the walls as you think your material is going to reach. So honestly, we're getting to about a couple inches, and this is probably a good amount um, for you to still have plenty of tube to seal on, and for it to contain your entire reaction mixture. We're going to put that down, turn the torch off, and that's it. Um, so you're going to typically want to do this three, two or three times. Um, for things like Bridgman tubes, which have really fine tips, three times will start to get, um, it'll start to peel off the sides because it just all can't live in that corner. So two coats is good for a Bridgman. But otherwise, three carbon coats is, is pretty typical and works for most cases. Um, so imagine you're a perfectionist. Uh, your carbon coat is is really cosmetic at this point, but say you want, you, you don't like all this schmoo at the end of your tube and you want to clean it and have it be nice and clean. And so what we've done here is we've taken our carbon coated tubes, we've rinsed out with the eye water all of the extra little graphite pieces and acetone goop that was still in the tube. So now this is wet with water. And so to clean this up a little bit, we all we need is a methane flame. If I get it, there we go. All we need is a methane flame, and then all we really have to do is we can sort of walk. Um, so all we have to do is we can sort of walk the flame up the end of the tube, and so that way we can start to like clean off the edge. So you're going to hold it in, and you're going to see again this sort of like red, actually, I don't even need these because it's not very bright. You're going to see this sort of red bloom again and so that's gonna be the carbon heating and actually coming off your tube so there we go so now we can I don't know if you can see this but I can see this nice red edge 
and I can just walk the uh, this flame uh, down up and down my tube. And so we're we're removing that extra little layer of carbon so that we get nice clean edges, so that we have nice pretty tubes for our reactions. So now I'm just gonna walk this all the way down the end so that when I seal, I have really nice pristine glass and I don't have to worry about there being any leftover carbon gunk that makes it harder for me to seal my tube. So really you're just gonna do this, you're gonna heat the things until you see them sort of glow and fall off your tube. And that tells you that it is nice and clean. So that we can have nice pretty tubes. And you can really see a nice sharp line versus sort of this more diffuse carbon coat on the side. So if you want pretty tubes, it's nice and easy. If you don't, it doesn't hurt either way. But uh, that's how you carbon coat and clean a tube. So if you need a more thorough method of carbon coating, uh, you can also do it in a furnace. So here we have that set up. So here we have our furnace held at 900 degrees Celsius. Uh, we have an acetone, what I assume to be acetone over here. It is flowing into our uh, T joint here. It's connected also to the nitrogen line as well as actually the inlet for our tube. And so really all you're doing is maintaining some constant vapor pressure of acetone so that your acetone will travel into your tube, get heated up in the furnace, and you'll get a nice, good, even coat all over the interior of your tube as, you're, as you have it in this sort of constant heat setup.